Hi everyone, welcome to Being Youthful. I'm Kim Beegler, I'm the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I am going to talk about all things yarn, making yarn, having a farm, all the things. So welcome if you haven't joined me before, and if you're coming back, thank you so much. Um, so this episode I am going to talk about just kind of an update of what's going on at the mill, what I'm working on, including some videos uh, of what I'm working on right now. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you are in Yarn Club, you won't see the finished yarn, but you will see a lot of the yarn along the way. So if you don't want to know anything that's coming your way, watch this episode after your box arrives. If you want to know, then keep on watching. Uh, so we're going to do that today. Um, I just got back into town yesterday. I went, I took a quick trip to LA in the meantime to my nephew's high school graduation. First niece or nephew to graduate from high school. So that was exciting. Congrats, Chris. Yahoo. And to my sister and Marty. Yay. Good job. He's turned out well. So, um, that was a good time and got to see some of my family and some of the Trejo family, my sister's extended family. So that was um, fun to catch up. And we did like after the graduation, the next day we did, uh, we had really good Mexican food, hurrah, to Southern California and delicious Mexican food. And then we went out to the bonfires and we had a big bonfire on the beach and ate s'mores, which is basically my dream come true. So it was really fun. Also, in case you didn't know, National Donut Day was while I was gone. So I don't think it's too late to celebrate with a donut. Um, I take my donuts very seriously. So Anyway, it was super fun. Mitch stayed home because the farm is just a little too much right now for him to get away. So he stayed home and held down the fort and took care of the animals and did all that stuff, which is its own thing. So um, everything looks good. He did great. And I think he's quite happy that I'm home for many reasons. So uh, here at the mill, what is going on? I am basically working on clubs and clubs and clubs, and then I'm gonna switch gear and start working on stuff for Black Sheep Gathering. But right now I'm just trying to get through Yarn Club and Fiber Club. So once again, if you're watching and you're in Yarn Club and you don't wanna see, this is the time. So I wanted to show you, um, in the meet, I also went up to um, the old wool scouring mill in Portland. We did a quick trip to Portland and I stopped by and bought some basically of their dead stock spun yarns. Some of it's just in singles, a little bit of it was plied, um, but I went up for something specific which has to do with this yarn club and then I bought some other stuff too. But uh, for the yarn club I got, they had some old wool mohair blend, sorry, mohair nylon blend, no wool, uh, that I had gotten the last time I was up there, have been playing with it, found out, made a yarn with it. So I wanted to show you just because I talk about it a bit in the videos, but um, the first video I show you is the yarn that I make being spun up and it's my prime bell blend, but I spun it just a little bit heavier, the single. So that's what you'll see the first video. The second video is me basically transferring bobbin to bobbin because um, for this yarn anyway, this is not necessarily the color you're getting here in club, but this is there and I think I've showed it. You can see the little boucle. So it is a wool mohair. Boucle means it has those little curly cues in there. Uh, so this is a, geez, I keep saying wool. Maybe it's because I love wool. This is a mohair nylon boucle. So it comes from Pendleton. They have different bobbins. Most mills have different bobbins, depending on your machinery, right? So my bobbins look like this, basically. So I had to get it off of their bobbin onto my bobbin to be able to work with it. So what I did was I have one bobbin that is broken and I was just about to have Mitch fix it when I said, hold on, I might need it because I need a way to smoothly have this unwind on my machine. The easiest way is to put it on this broken bobbin and then it, not that one, that's inside, it can turn easily. See how nice and easy that is. That's kind of what I need it to do to come off of this onto one of these bobbins on the machine. So the second video you'll see is me transferring from this onto one of my bobbins. And then the final video, spinning video, is 
plying. So I'm plying this with that first yarn that got spun. And that is the fiber club yarn. But I'm not gonna show you what it actually looks like. And I'm, yeah, and there's different colors. Anyway, whatever. If you're watching this far, you're, you're down for the spoiler. Um, and then I also thought, you know what? Everybody loves to see Mama and her chicks. So since I hadn't seen them in a couple days and they are notably bigger and even popping outside a little bit with Mama, so I thought, let's go ahead and um, show you that too. So I think what we'll do is go see all the videos. And for people not watching, I put music over the spinning videos because the spinner is so loud that you would not enjoy watching the spinning video if I left it just playing as the spinner runs. So um, enjoy. I'll be back in a minute and uh, we'll finish up. See you guys in a sec. in the spinning room and I wanted to kind of show you what I'm doing here uh, further onward with yarn clubs. So I'm gonna flip you around. Okay, so the first thing I had to do, is move my headphones so I don't sound crazy to myself. Okay, so the first thing I had to do was turn the master speed down on my spinner and I usually have it set at seven and I've turned it down to three so that the spinner just basically moves at a slower pace. If I don't do that, I can show you what happens versus what I need to happen. You can see how unevenly it spun. It was going so fast that it was kicking yarn in front of itself. It still works, but it's not as pretty. So here is when I turn the master down, you can see how smooth it is going onto the bobbin. And what we're doing here is taking some yarn off of a bobbin. And you can see this is very different than mine. One of mine is here. Um, off of a bobbin that Pendleton used when they were spinning and we're going to put it onto one of my bobbins here. And you can see how usually this whole arm would be down, but in this case, since I'm literally just trying to get the yarn from one bobbin to another bobbin, I'm just running it through here. It comes down and it goes into this little pigtail attachment, which I just got from Mini Mills, so that it is basically going to, as the um, as this moves up and down, it is just a guide to get the yarn onto the bobbin up and down. So as soon as I start playing it, it'll make sense to you guys, but I just kind of wanted to talk you through it and uh, I'm gonna start it now, something a little different.
for about, I want to say, three weeks old now. Mama's decided it's okay out here, so there they go. Let's see if I can get anything on the other side, but we'll see. They're getting big. They're starting to get feathers. <laughs> They're all still a little nervous outside, but... Okay, guys. See you in a minute. Okay. Are you guys excited to see that yarn or what? It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. I'm excited. I hope my clubbers enjoy it. It'll be going out by the end of this week. I just have to finish plying and getting it washed up and dried. So as soon as that's done, it, it'll start trickling out in the next few days. So, um, so I thought I would go through some of the questions. And so for this episode, I believe it was Holly Scott asked me, she was curious how the different breeds are on different sides of the country basically between east and west coast it's a great question um, and it can be pretty diverse it's not to say that east and west coast don't have similar overlap i should say overlap of breeds but in general you are going to see more of the fine wools grown on the east coast well, I should say that over maybe the Pacific Northwest. I believe in California. In California, you're gonna get some fine wools also. Basically, it comes down to climate and wet versus dry. So depending on where you are, up here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't grow as much of the fine wools because their um, wool is very sensitive to the wet, their feet are very sensitive to the wet, and so they just don't do as well overall here. That isn't to say that people aren't growing them, but it takes a lot of extra work to grow a merino here in Oregon. A lot of times people have to put coats on them, they have to uh, do more foot baths and things like that. So um, I'd say that you're gonna see more fine wools on the East Coast, and certainly I think there are some states where you're gonna see more of different breeds of sheep. Here on the west coast you're going to see more of the Romneys and the Shetlands and the Jacob sheep because they're more heritage breed, they're a little more hardy sheep, and they do a little bit better in our harsh climate as far as wet. When I say harsh, I mean wet. So um, hopefully that answers the question there. Uh, and I think you'll see overlap in all. There's obviously Romneys and Shetlands on the East Coast, the Midwest, everywhere, but it just depends on the weather, really. And the hardiness of the sheep is where, where a lot of people determine what kind of sheep they're breeding. Um, okay, I think that's everything, you guys. These are short and sweet, man. It kind of, it just is working well. And it seems like you guys are really enjoying it too. Somebody made a great comment that, especially during the summer, I think Sharon, you said this, during the summer, um, you know, things start to get busy. And so watch, having shorter episodes, it's just easier to squeeze them in. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, I think I'm gonna do the giveaway on the next video because it hasn't been quite two weeks. So I gotta keep you guys, you know, keep you watching. So anyway, Thank you so much for coming to watch. I hope you enjoy kind of seeing an update of what's going on at the mill. I'll see you guys in a few days. We'll probably visit some animals then, I'm gonna guess. And uh, until then, take care, stay healthy, make lots of pretty things. Thank you.